All right. So now let's take a look at metallic bonding. And also we're going to revisit the directionality a little bit. All right. So unlike ionic and covalent, metallic bonding uh, can be thought of as having a positive core. So the nucleus, which is positive, plus um, the inner electrons that creates a positive core and then shared valence electrons. So you can kind of pool all of the electrons that would be valence and those are shared amongst the other metallic elements. So basically this gives us a solid that is primary electro uh, composed of electropositive atoms. Um, and so we get those positive cores and then the remaining valence electrons are shared um, throughout the, the structure. So we can kind of think of those with magnesium. Magnesium is an electropositive metal. It has uh, atomic number of 12, so 12 electrons, 12 protons. And so we can think of everything but these uh, valence electrons, which are two, um, as the positive core. And so that would have a plus two charge, and then the two electrons would have a minus two charge. So we basically just kind of take this and look at it like this, where we have a plus two charge core, so an ion, and then two uh, electrons, which are free to be shared amongst the other metal elements that we have. So there's, um, so there's really no uh, electronegative atoms to kind of receive the electrons, and so those electrons are shared. So it has elements of ionic, kind of see from the ion, ion core, but it also has elements of covalent because the electrons are shared, but it's distinctive bonding that we see. And so this is the way that we view it. We don't necessarily view it as an isolated element or pair, we think of it as a solid. So that means a, a larger material. And so we have these ion cores, and then everything around, uh, around that would be these valence electrons, which are um, separated from a specific ion core. And so they're not localized at a given core, so we call them delocalized. And it's a cloud because we think of it as, as all of these electrons surrounding these cores. So you might hear that term electron cloud. That's what we're referring to, the kind of this green area where all these electrons are free to move from one um, uh, ion core to the next. So we think of it as a positive ion cores surrounded by this delocalized cloud of valence electrons. And so because of this, um, the way that this is created with these ion cores, again, the bond force, um, because we have a positive core, the force is the same in all directions, right? Because it only depends on the charge and the radius. So the bond force and energy is going to be the same depending on, uh, independent of the direction. So this is non-directional bonding. So the directionality is the same in all. And so that non-directional nature of these delocalized electrons explains some of the properties that we get with metals. So metals have what is called impact toughness. So just, you know, very basically, um, it is impact. So basically you can think of the hammer hitting something, right? That is impact. And toughness basically remain, means it's resilient to that. So instead of breaking, it's going to uh, sort of absorb that impact. So metals can do that because um, the atoms can easily slip past each other. So if we have this material and it's hit with a hammer, what can happen is part of that material can basically be moved relative to the others down here because it's non-directional and it shares those electrons. And so it can respond to that impact and move. And this is known as ductile response because it's able to move without breaking. So 
metals are very ductile. They can be shaped very easily because of this nature of the bonding, because of these electrons. And again, if we revisit it, ionic bonding is also non-directional. So the bonding is equal in all directions, regardless of the, um, the, uh, the value here. So that's, um, that's also um, one of those. But if we look at this in terms of that same high impact, um, this is low toughness. So if I hit something with a hammer uh, to an ionic material, um, it has very low toughness because it tends to just break. Because what happens here is if I try to move that same, so we have this sort of dashed line which represents the plane that's um, fixed. And then we're trying to move the, uh, the material in the top to the right, like you see here. But what happens there is if you try to move it, these negative ions get really close to each other. And these positive ions get further and further apart from each other. <coughs> Excuse me. And so um, this is uh, leads to very high repulsion. And so instead of being able to move and be ductile, it can't do that and it just breaks. And we call that brittle, when it just breaks in response uh, to that material without deforming much like a ductile material. And so those are some of the, the differences that we see with bonding and how it relates to the material properties.